Welcome into the Original Gangsters Podcast. I'm going to do a solo edition this week. Scott Bernstein, uh, the hostess with the mostest. Uh, I'm going to just roll it solo with uh, my boy Jimmy. Uh, the doctor, Bucciolato, uh, is in the middle of moving houses, and it's finals week at uh, Wayne State. So he's going to sit it out this week, and I'm going to do a quick episode. Um, and I'm going to harken back to an old Sopranos season um, that uh, I believe they – they rolled out an episode called The Class of 04 uh, about a bunch of guys from the fictional Lupertazzi crime family from New York that were getting out after 20 years. And the next uh, couple seasons of the show uh, dealt with the uh, the ripple effects. So I'm going to do an episode called Class of 23, and we're going to talk about uh, a handful of guys that uh, real OGs, old timers from the New York mafia that uh, have come out of prison in the last couple months um after doing some serious time um uh you know two of these guys did 30 years and uh, uh another couple guys did 10 plus so um well one guy did uh um did uh 10 plus and another guy did did a short five years but uh, let me break it down for you uh, we got three members of the colombo crime family all veterans of the 1990s colombo shooting war uh, guys that were on the front lines of that war and were convicted of of gangland slayings tied to that war. So uh, let's start with Joe Monteleone, uh, Tommy Schatz, uh, Gioli, and um, Anthony Chucky Russo. All three have uh, got out of prison since the beginning of the year. Uh, Joe Monte was a soldier. Uh, Chucky Russo was a capo. And uh, Tommy Schatz uh, was a capo and then eventually became acting boss, street boss after the war. And got his nickname Tommy Shots because he was shot in the war. Um, you know, just a quick primer on what was going on back in the 90s. And uh, with the Colombo crime family, you had the, the longtime boss, uh, Carmine Persico, who was in prison. He had named uh, Little Vic uh, uh, Arena his acting boss in, in the spring of 1988. Uh, but by the 1990s, uh, Arena had gotten um, power hungry and uh, didn't want to step down. When uh, Carmine's son, Alley Boy, little Alley Boy, was was going to come out and in, in, uh, come out of prison and uh, take over that acting boss spot, uh, Carmine made a, a declaration in early 1991 that when uh, little Alley Boy got out of prison in uh, '93, two years from that point, he was going to take over and Vic Arena was going to have to move out of the way. Vic Arena at this point um, began to rally the troops behind him, go to the commission, and uh, tried to take the family away from. The Persico mob dynasty, and uh, eventually it broke out into a shooting war. lasted about two years, uh, a dozen bodies, and over a hundred arrests. So three guys from that from that conflict have walked out of prison in the last couple of weeks, last couple of months. Uh, Joe Monteleone, Joe Monte was a soldier uh, in the Russo crew. He belonged to the the Jojo Russo crew. Jojo Russo's first cousin, Chucky Russo, Anthony Chucky Russo. Um, was also a capo and uh, both, and, he, and he, he, he recently got out of prison and uh, both Chucky and Joe Monte did about 27 years, 28 years and are coming into a kind of a whole different landscape that they left uh, back in, in the 1990s. Chucky Russo's 71, uh, I believe, and Joe Monte owns 83. So it'll be interesting to see where they fit in or if they fit in, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of talk about, um, you know, the health of these guys and, and, and some of their health ailments actually help you know, spring them from prison a little bit early. Uh, when it comes to Tommy Schatz, you know, his fam, uh, his, his attorneys are saying that uh, he, he just is dealing with a, a myriad of, of health ailments tied to his diabetes. And uh, but I don't know, he's 70, 70 years old. It seems like he's got he's not that long in the tooth. Very respected. One of these guys that was kind of playing mediator during that war eventually had to choose a side and sided with the Persicos. He came up um, under the Russos as well. Uh, Monteleone, Chucky Russo, and Tommy Gioli were all linked to the 1992 murder of Johnny Cannoli's uh, John Minerva and his bodyguard, uh, Big Mike and Bergamo, uh, that were killed in, in Long Island uh, outside of uh, Minerva's pastry shop. I think it was April of 92. And it was organized by the, the Russos and uh, Joe Monteleone. 
And Tommy Schatz was uh, uh, also supposedly involved in it. Uh, Tommy Schatz didn't go to prison as a result of what went down in that 1990s Colombo War. Uh, Montaleone did and Chucky Russo did. But uh, Tommy Schatz stayed on the street and helped put the family back together uh, after the unrest. And he was actually a, a part of um, a kind of a, a residual gangland slain after the, the, the shooting had stopped in, in around 93. One of the, the big um, shot callers on the, on the, the side of the, the insurgency, uh, Wild Bill Cotolo, uh, was was really kind of rocked to sleep by the Persicos. They were very angry at his disloyalty, uh, and uh, but they pretended like all was forgiven, and they they actually named him underboss uh, as a way to kind of get his guard down. And then Tommy Schatz, Gioli, and, and some of his um, soldiers, guys that he mentored, the two Dinos, um, Little and Big Dino, were, were, were some of the guys that that took Wild Bill out in the spring of, of 99. And then Tommy Schatz at some point in 0203 became acting boss of the crime family and was acting boss until he, he was indicted in 08 and, and, and went to prison in the late 2000s. But um, is a guy that's widely respected across New York City, across multiple crime families. And it should be interesting to see what happens with him back in the mix. Chucky Russo is one of these... Um, He's mob royalty. He's, he's part of the, the mafia dynasty that is the Persico crime family. Uh, the Persicos and the Russos are first cousins. And uh, uh, Jojo Russo, I know this gets confusing with all these names. Um, Joe Monteleone belonged to, to Jojo Russo's crew, who was Chucky's cousin. Jojo, who died in prison. But uh, Jojo was the son of uh, Andy Mush Russo, who was the acting boss um, on and off for about 30 years for, for his first cousin. Uh, Carmine Persico. Um, Jojo was his son. Uh, Chucky was uh, one of his cousins and um, nephews. Chucky is kind of the last man standing. Uh, Andy Mush Russo died last year. Carmine uh, Persico died in prison three, four years ago. Jojo Russo died in prison. Uh, the only guys that are still left uh, are, are are Chucky and Billy Russo. And uh, so Chucky, you know, he's only 70 years old, has that reputation and uh, the name recognition, went away as a capo. Should be interesting to see where he where he slots into the fine, uh, into the crime family. Joe Monteleone, I get the feeling that, you know, he's just kind of going to enjoy his final years. Uh, wasn't a guy that was an administrator at any point, was never a capo. Uh, but, you know, I, I guess only time will tell. And then um, let's just finish off moving over to uh, the Lucchese crime family. Uh, conciliary, Joe DiNapoli, Big Joe, a.k.a. Joey D. Um, he got out of prison recently as well. Uh, he did about five, six years uh, on a big racketeering case that took down the administration of the Lucchese crime family back in uh, 2017. Um, he was in the... Uh, you know, in the top three there with with Maddie Madonna, uh, Stevie Crea, and uh, Joe D as the as the conciliary with Crea as underboss and Maddie Madonna as as the boss. Both Crea and Madonna uh, were convicted in murders in that 17 case, or a murder. Uh, Ex Purple Gang leader Mike Meldish, who was from the Purple Gang uh, uh, that the 1970s Harlem. Uh, Bronx Purple Gang, uh, who was at one point very close to uh, to Maddie Madonna, had a falling out. Madonna ordered him murdered. Uh, but even though Joe D was conciliary and was uh, Maddie Madonna's top advisor, he was not ensnared in that uh, murder conspiracy and was not sentenced to life in prison um, and walked out um, in, in the last uh, uh, month. So, you know, he's 87. Uh, again, I, I don't know uh, what that means for him. You know, does he come back as conciliary? Uh, probably not. You know, they have a whole new administration in there that uh, the the boss of the family, who kind of like Carmine Persico, Vic Musso, is in prison, calling shots from behind bars, put in a whole uh, new administration right when that previous administration had gotten indicted uh, in kind of what was described as a bloodless coup where uh, Amuso rem removed three guys and put three 
um, replacements in there. And, and, and Joe D was one of those guys that got replaced. Yeah, you know, I, I believe he's, he's still in relative good standing. I think a lot of the issues were more with Maddie and, and Stevie and just the fact that they were going away and, and Vic wanted a new people in there. Uh, Big Mike DeSantis, Patty Red, um, and, and uh, Andrew D. Simone are the, are the guys that we've been told are, are uh, from court court uh, testimony and, and uh, court records are running the cases right now. But again, if you're if you're a conciliary of, a, of a, one of the five families, you obviously um, you got a lot of juice and uh, uh, you know wide ranging respect, or or you wouldn't have reached that post. So Joe D, a guy that. Uh, dates back in that Lucchese crime family all the way back to the 60s, late 60s, um, and early 70s. And uh, he was in uh, Gribbs's crew, Carmine Tremonte, a.k.a. Gribbs. And if you know the movie Goodfellas, he's referenced uh, by by Big Pauly in the scene where he says, you know, I, I ain't going to I ain't going to be like Gribbs. Uh, Gribbs got, uh, you know, 70 years for talking to some 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 chump that was dealing drugs and not telling him about it. Uh, that's not the exact quote, but. Uh, I always wondered from watching that movie who Gribbs was. And then when I got into this, I kind of learned. And, you know, the guy was a pretty legendary uh, a boss in the Lucchese crime family in the 70s and went away um, for the rest of his life to prison and, and died in prison because he got caught up in a, in a drug case that was referenced in the movie. But Joe D came up uh, under um, under Gribbs and, and uh, another guy that was made his way into movie lore uh, uh, Gigi the Whale and Glacy, who was um, the basis of a character in the movie uh, Bronx Tale, Jojo the Whale. So, uh, you know, he was tied to two two guys that were were uh, reference points in some pretty iconic movies. But Joe D's 87 years old, probably, again, just wants to kind of come home and spend time with his family. But you never know. Uh, these guys are, are really, you know, people ask me all the time, like, you know, why do these guys want to go back, you know, after they've spent X amount of uh, years away from their family or locked up and uh, wouldn't come, you know, um, it, normal intuition or, or normal thought process uh, would be that you just want to stay out of trouble and um, not gravitate back towards a life that can either kill you uh, violently or, or put you back in, put you back in a cage. But you know, being in this world of reporting for two decades now and getting to know a lot of these guys, studying them, getting to know them personally, uh, it's, it's you know, it's in their blood. It's in their DNA. This is who they are. Uh, they feel lost when they're not being a criminal, when they're not being true to the, uh, an organization, even though that organization is very rarely true to them back. And that's, um, you know, I think that's been a, a narrative that's been proven true on and on over the last 30, 40 years of how this kind of oath you give is is more of a one way street than a two way street. Uh, but uh, Joe D's back, Tommy Schatz is back, Joe Monty's back, and Chucky Russo are all back in New York City um, as of uh, you know from the first the first uh, guys started to filter out in February. Uh, last guys got out in April. Um, so it should be interesting to see how that all shakes out. Class of 2023 in the New York Mafia. Uh, Twenty years after the Sopranos had a class of 2000. Uh, four. So, you know, we'll be uh, keeping you up to date with what we hear here on the Original Gangsters podcast. Um, you can check Gangster Report, which is my web magazine where I, I update it on a daily basis with these kind of stories about who's coming, who's going, who's getting promoted, uh, what investigations are going on, uh, who's meeting with who. So uh, www.gangsterreport.com. Um, you can get it there, and then uh, me and Jimmy are going to be back, uh, bringing out some uh, some some fresh content in the next week. We're going to be getting into some more um, East Coast uh, LCN. We got an episode uh, that's going to deal with Providence that's on the horizon, and then uh, we got another one where we're going to talk about a very very intriguing unsolved uh, mystery and allegation, unsolved murder mystery and allegations of some pretty. Um, if it, if it's if these allegations are true, which court cases uh, haven't been very successful, but these allegations would um, are, are very very sensational and, and paint uh, law enforcement in New Jersey in a very negative light. Uh, it's in relation to the 2007 murder of Frankie Logano, 
uh, a Lucchese soldier who was um, a cooperator and whose a status of a cooperator had, had leaked. And he was murdered within a couple of weeks of that information leaking to the street back in 07. He was under indictment uh, for a big mob case out of New Jersey called Operation Jersey Boys. Um, and Legato's family has uh, made some pretty severe accusations against um, the police in uh, Bergen County uh, of, uh, of tipping off the Lucchese. And there was a wrongful death lawsuit. It's been tossed out of court. We're going to deep dive it uh, in the next couple of weeks. And we're going to uh, you know, really give you the top to bottom what happened to Frankie Logano and, and why, it, why it happened and who was possibly involved in it. So uh, for Jimmy Bucciolato and our uh, producer, Ben, I uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, this quick hitter episode, class of 2023, the New York Mafia. Um, they all graduated from college, and they're all they're all coming back on their graduation tour uh, into New York City. Uh, Scott Bernstein, OG Podcast, out.